Hi, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Going back to Carlisle today, I'm going to go inside the Chevrolet booth and I'm going to show you guys the breakdown of a couple of things on the inner workings of a C8 Corvette. They've got a really amazing cutaway model that is on display at a lot of Chevrolet events that they go to. And I wanted to give you guys an idea of, of what kind of things go into making the Corvette such a great price point and also how they're able to give you such a great quality ride for the dollar. You know, there's a lot of really great ingenuitive ideas that are inside of the Corvette and it's really great to see um, the inner workings, you know, having a cutaway to kind of get in underneath the, the hood is, as they would say and, and see what this Corvette is all about on a side that most people don't get to see. You know, I would never want to take her my Corvette to the length that this cutaway was done. And so thankfully they have done it for us and it's going to give us a lot of insight on what to uh, expect or to see on your C8 Corvette. Now on a side note, I do have some C8s and C7s still available and actually a C5 as well available. This one here over here, this, this Grand Sport, I'm very surprised that this one's still available. In Long Beach Red Grand Sport, this is to me a really great unique build and it has the exposed carbon fiber package that's on it. So it's a very classy girl. She's a little dusty, which, which is unfortunate. We'll get her all shined up. And then this C8 we just got in two days ago. This is a sweet spot C8. So we got black on the outside, adrenaline red on the inside, 2LT hard top convertible. This over here, this is an OG. This is a round bottom. Round bottoms are where they were 15 and six, 14, 15 and 16, where on the bottom of the steering wheel, you'll see here it has a round bottom instead of the flat bottom. You can kind of tell there was a bunch of um, infotainment and interior upgrades that came on the 2016 models and they went to a flat bottom steering wheel. So I call those round bottoms if they're from a 15 or a 14 model year. And then we got a nice little cruise over here. This is a 2019 2LT Stingray, automatic, two-tone red interior. Doesn't get more iconic in terms of a cruiser than that right there, and an automatic convertible with red interior. Very cool build. So I hope you guys enjoy that. We're gonna go down to Carlisle now, but I'm also gonna give you guys a little montage of some more C8s that I saw there. This is gonna be mostly a C8 focused episode. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, I'm in the booth. Harlan Charles is back there for, for crying out loud. Like this is just a kid's dream if you love Corvettes. Let's stay focused though. Harlan, Harlan can wait. We can talk to him later. There's so many things that I wanna to talk to you guys and this is just an excellent tool to be able to give you a visual aid on a lot of the things that I talk about. For starters, I wanna talk about high pressure die casting. I wanna talk about why we don't have a manual transmission. I wanna show you the architecture and why this thing is so cost effective for what it is. And it's an excellent tool. This cutaway is at the GM booth at Carlisle. I'm pretty sure that they take it to a number of events and I would pretty much put my dollar on it that if you were gonna go to the um, Inter -North, or North American International Auto Show that it'll all be there as well. So high pressure die casting, what does that mean? Well, high pressure die casting is this component right here, a uh, lot of the components for the frame, the tunnel, and then in the back here with the strut towers as well. They use well, just like the name says, high pressure to cast aluminum, and it makes it a lot stronger. It has a lot of similar traits to what you would see with a steel component, which obviously would weigh a lot more. 
Now where this C8 Corvette really shines is the fact that all Corvettes that are in the C8 generation are actually technically convertibles. And you can see that when you have this cutaway that there is no structural retention or rigidity that comes through the top here. It's all technically a convertible. And why that's important to note is because the subframe has this backbone. And the backbone is the reason why this Corvette is so ergonomic and efficient at what it does. It's making a very stiff frame so that when you have magnetic ride control, for example, it can use the suspension to do all the work instead of having the frame do all the work. Now, the other benefit to that is obviously in the performance world where you have, you know, a stiff chassis that'll help out on the racetrack. But I also want to note about why we don't have a manual transmission. The backbone here is where we're putting most of our reinforcements instead of using the door sills. And on most supercars, when you look at them, they're like a tub. And when you have a tub, it makes the ergonomics of getting your feet in and out of the Corvette or any supercar a lot more difficult because they're using this specific area to reinforce it. Whereas on the Corvette, we're using this area. So having a larger backbone means that you can have a way more ergonomic door sill, which allows you to be able to get out in, in and out a lot better. Now, if we were to take this backbone and cut a hole in it for gear linkages for a manual transmission, we would be sacrificing the area that we put all of our, our strength into because we wanted to have some more utility in the vehicle. And that to me is first and foremost, a big, big loss. You know, you're gonna lose all that strength. And this is coming from somebody that wants a manual transmission. You know, Taj talked about it, how there was a tear that was shed when they finally made the decision that they weren't gonna be able to do a manual transmission on it. We're not even gonna get into the dollars and cents component of that. The second thing is, is if you look at where the LT2 powertrain is, and then you look at where the driver sits and the tunnel, you'll notice that they don't line up perfectly and it's not gonna be something where they could have a direct line to the actual powertrain. That's the final straw that broke the camel's back when it came to making that decision if it was gonna have a manual transmission. And I hope that that can give you a little bit more of a visual aid by showing you how we reinforced it through this backbone structure and making it so that it has a lot more uh, functionality with getting in and out of the vehicle. And in my opinion, I'm glad that they did it. Now on to some other components. Well, you know, you can see already off the bat that there's a lot of aluminum cans that went into making this car, but there's also some other materials. Back here is a carbon fiber subframe bumper. Now it's pretty cool to know that there are carbon fiber components on your vehicle. And we use a lot of that in composites, you know, a lot of the areas in the back deck over here and in the front fascia, those are all areas that we use carbon fiber. We also have carbon fiber components that you can purchase in the engine appearance package. And, um, you know, in my opinion, it's just, it's really, really amazing to see all the types of materials, including magnesium. You know, you have magnesium for the paddle shifters, but maybe people don't notice there's also a magnesium firewall inside of the Corvette. So that's something that it's just nice to know, you know, we're using a lot of high-end materials in your vehicle and we're doing it in a functional manner. So another component that I want to talk about in terms of the quality of the ride comes from glass. And that's probably not an area that you think of when you think of quality of ride, but it has to do with the sound quality. This LT2 is great. Love what it does. Love the noises that come out of it. But on a long road trip like I just went on, sometimes it's not the best to have that noise come into the, the, the cabin. And road noise, ambient road noise in general, is always something that engineering are trying to, to combat with. And one of the things that really is helpful in being able to give you a visual aid is this piece of glass in the back here. If you guys can see that, that is a really, really thick piece of glass. And that piece of glass is doing a really great job at keeping the road noise and all those auxiliary noises that happen in the engine compartment outside of the cabin. And that's gonna improve the quality of the ride because you're not gonna have to listen to that monotonous drone of your alternator or, or maybe the, the fans that are going on to keep the LT2 powertrain uh, cool. And it, and it really is just great. You know, I, I think that that at the end of the day is a really great visual aid to be able to show you what we do to make your experience in the Corvette that much better. And it comes down to even things like glass that make that experience all the better. All right, guys. So we got the cutaway here. We've been going over a lot of cool things. One thing that I like to note about the vehicle are things that maybe you assumed 
were something, and then it ended up being something completely different. How many people thought that there were two fuel tanks on the C8 Corvette? I don't think a lot of people did. On the C8 Corvette, your first fuel tank is right here. And then there's actually a feeder line that goes on the other side and your second fuel tank is over here. It's really cool. I, I never knew that. I always assumed, I, I don't know why I did, but I assumed that there was one fuel tank on the C8 Corvette. And nope, there's not, there's two. And they have a feeder line that goes underneath your LT2 engine to get that fuel from the other side. I just think that's really interesting. And it's something to note that if you wanted to get into a match with your friend about how many fuel tanks your car has, you can one up them and say that you got two now. Now I know we're not supposed to talk about future content, but there's a lot of photos already outside on the air, on the internet, talking about this new model that's coming out. And in this area in particular, I want to talk about it because we have our first look at what the front compartment and the front of the Corvette has on it. You'll see from this cutaway that there's actually a lot of open area in here. And if we're talking about maybe having a hybrid vehicle in the future or from some spy photos that have come out, how there's another heat exchanger, it actually makes a lot of sense why they're using this real estate up for it. You know, I, I'm not trying to make any decisions and, and, and jump to conclusions based on what I think is going to happen on future content. But one of the concerns that I have is if there is a hybrid component in the future, that a lot of that real estate that's in the front is going to be used up by a hybrid powertrain. And I'm not saying that this is a reason that I'm not going to buy the vehicle, but I do really enjoy the amount of utility that comes from my Corvette. And having the ability to put a full cart of groceries in my frunk is something that I'm proud of. I think that's really great. You know, there's a guy that, that lives down the street from me that has a Lamborghini. He can barely put in a pizza in his car. I can put a whole cart of groceries and go to Costco with style. I can go to Costco and not have to worry in the least bit that my Corvette is not going to be able to handle what comes at it. That's not what I'm talking about in this episode, but at least you know a little bit about my buying habits now. Where I'm going with this is that I have a lot more reassurance that there is going to be a lot of fun things that can come in the front end of the Corvette based on now seeing this cutaway and seeing how much open space they have. They have a lot of fun area in here to put another heat exchanger. If they wanted to put a hybrid component inside of this vehicle, I hate to say it, but you may have a smaller frunk on it. And I can see why when you look at the inside. Pretty cool, eh? Now that last component about the future content, we know now that it's the Z06 or Z06. And uh, on the 26th, so in less than a few weeks, uh, we're going to be finally able to get a lot more insight on what's going to happen in that frunk area for cooling. In particular, I think that the, the flat plane crank V8 or the supposed flat plane crank V8 is going to need a lot of extra cooling. And I think that the real estate in the front is definitely going to be able to help out with that. Now that you get an idea of what it looks like and to think of all those high end materials, you know, that to me is really cool to know that you have a magnesium firewall inside of your Corvette. And in terms of materials to save on costs as well, you know, I was talking a little bit about the tubs that we use and how we have a lot more ergonomic uh, egress in and out of the Corvette because of the, the frame that we use through extruded aluminum. And uh, I think it's important to note that that's one of the other reasons why the Corvette is so affordable compared to other vehicles. When you're using a carbon fiber tub, it's an extremely expensive process and to have high pressure die casting through aluminum it is going to give you a lot more um, ergonomics but the same kind of structural rigidity and a significant reduction in cost. So I'm very happy that we've gone with this very uh, wholesome, you know, cost effective route to be able to get the job done. And that's what GM does best. They mass produce really great engineered ideas. And I think, um, you know, with Mary Barra being an engineer and a lot of the top level management at General Motors being engineers, it really is kind of fun to think that one of the largest automotive companies in the world is run by engineers. And when you get that, that, that view underneath the hood or beneath the skin of the Corvette, you can really see a lot of American ingenuity, or I guess there's people from all over the world. I shouldn't just say it's Americans, but for the most part, y'all Americans, you did good on this one. And we looked underneath the hood and I like what I saw. So thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Stay tuned. I still got some more awesome episodes. We got a Zeus bronze 
exclusive episode that we're going to be doing. And then I'm going to get some old school cool going on in the channel from the, the Carlisle as well. So there's still more to come. I hope you guys enjoy this content. If you are interested in seeing more of it and being notified when it happens, hit that subscribe button and then the little bell notification will tell you every time I have an episode come out. Stay tuned for more awesome content. I'm Morgan Crosby and happy motoring. Oh man, guys, as I was just finishing this episode, what the heck are these? We got some World War II planes flying over us while we're filming. No way. Brownie points to whoever can figure out what these are. They're Royal Canadian Air Force planes, I can tell. They're yellow and they're flying in unison pretty cool. Well, thank you very much, Royal Canadian Air Force, for flying over at the grand finale of this, this cutaway engineering episode from Cars and Crosby. Now this is the real end of the episode. <laughs>